Okay, here's what you should have when you're all done. A nice joisted floor system, ready to go for your sheathing, your plywood sheathing, or your decking material. This is very sturdy. And just to reiterate, these are uh, joists set at 16 inches on center. And then to make up the difference here, I just added an extra joist in here since the span was a little bit wide. So this is the completed product and I'll give you a nice walk around here. All the joists have eight screws per hanger side. Very strong and sturdy. Concrete's nice and cured. And now you can safely add your, uh, your decking or your sheathing. One thing to note with this type of construction is if you're gonna go for a span uh, wider than nine feet, don't use a two by six, uh, use a two by eight, etc. So you're, you're gonna wanna uh, take a look at a load calculator to make sure that you have the correct joist size for your span. Um, if you were to also say you wanted to build a deck that was 16 foot wide this same type of construction will work using two by sixes, but you'd have to basically create a support uh, ledger in the middle of your decking system every eight feet with concreted posts in the ground. But here's a good look of what it's supposed to look like when it's done. I thought this might be a good time to show you sort of this simple but not very simple process of putting down the sheathing here. This is three quarter inch exterior CDX um, plywood and what I've done is just run my uh, chalk lines across and that basically tells me where a joist is underneath the, the plywood so I can attach this correctly all the way down the line. And this worked out to just be two sheets of plywood um, on each side times two uh, to give me an eight by 16 area. And then back here, the reason I have a two by four down here was strategic. So if I ever have to unbolt this little lean-to from the barn, I don't have to lift up the entire floor system, which would suck if it's underneath um, walls. All I have to do is come in here and unattach my two by four, then I can get to my lags from underneath, get my hand in there and get a gun in there and take those lags out. So that would allow me to detach it from the actual uh, cook barn. So that's just something to think about as you're going, but this is pretty straightforward. Um, what I did to make sure all of the plywood is, uh, what you'd say, pretty much flush. This isn't screwed down yet, so. Don't pay attention to that, but flush to the ledger board, because sometimes things aren't perfect, is I lay all the boards up and I tack it down in a couple spots with a screw, and then I run underneath the board this direction with a Sharpie all the way around, and I mark the entire perimeter. Then I untack the boards and I flip them upside down and I cut them. And I've seen guys come in and just uh, run a circular saw down the ledger and cut them, but in my experience, I've done that before and I've actually gouged a ledger board, so completely skipped that whole potential uh, disaster. It's just easier to do it the way I did it. So what I'm going to do now is go through and um, attach this flooring system to the joists with two inch deck screws. I like to try to use screws as much as I can, so if anything ever has to be taken apart, I can take it apart without having to hack it apart with a hammer. So keep going here. Alright, show you a little trick here on laying out these uh, screw holes I'm going every 10 inches on these uh, sheets of plywood here and I got one of these little 
uh, six foot rulers and I love it because I just lay it down and then I just go 20, 30, 40, 50 and I just keep driving them in which is nice so you don't have to sit there and mark the wood. Welcome back to framing day. I just swept the work surface here. I got my little, love these little things, this little Black & Decker Workmate. Um, <clears throat> it's cool to just put all your stuff up on so it's at, you know, hand height. So now I'm gonna start the uh, framing process here and I just wanted to show, I got a wall done yesterday. Uh, it's not complete, I just have to add a corner post. But this wall is ready to go. This is where the double door is gonna go, six foot double door, uh, and then, um, that's going to be my lowest point, which is the double header. So I'll start explaining this here in a second. So let's use this wall as an example here that I'm building. This is the back wall that's going to sit right here. And this is going to get a little window in it, as you can see. And the way walls are made is you make them on the ground first, and then you put them up. So I calculated my desired uh, head height, which would be the top of the main um, stud that goes all the way across and that'll be a double header. I'll show you that later. That's actually uh, what this looks like here. Double header. So you have two two by fours up on top to support the load of the roof. Uh, so basically what's going on is you lay it all out on the ground. I like to do these where I don't put anything together. I try to keep a nice square surface which is what I'm using that two by four there in the back for. Put everything together, kind of lay out how I'm going to do my wall and then I tack it all together. Um, this is pretty basic. I calculated my um, stud height at 63 inches. This is a low building because my roof uh, is going to join into this barn and kind of tie right in underneath that wall to make a nice watertight seal. And to do that, it's going to be a gradual pitch that goes in this direction. Um, it's going to be a, a pretty base. Hey, buddy. Here's Murph. It's gonna be a pretty basic roof, just with a typical uh, slight slope on it. But your head height needs to be the lowest point, which is over here. So 63 inches plus three inches on the double header plus an inch and a half down there is gonna be your total wall height, which is not six feet. <laughs> so it's gonna have to be uh, crouching down in here. But I just wanted to show this. This is a nice clean uh, workspace that I have created here. Uh, just to give you an idea how I do this. I have Murphy. He helps out, right buddy? I have my two by four section up here. Uh, this is where my stock is. I cut off to the side so all my scrap falls down here, which I'll use to frame in the window over there. And then I build over here onto the left. So if, if you're gonna be building walls, uh, you definitely don't wanna be doing them on the ground because you need to keep everything nice and square as you tack everything together and as you lay everything out. Uh, another trick of the trade is, uh, you remember these joists, uh, where you see the chalk lines, those are set at 16 inches on center. So what you could do, which is what I did on the first wall over there, is you can lay out your wall the same way as you do your floor joists and set your studs on those chalk lines and that'll give you your 16 inches on center. But I always go through and measure off the wall, but that's just a little trick you could do. Right, buddy? So I'm gonna keep going on this and I'll show you what this wall consists of and how you frame up a window uh, on one of these sheds. Helpers! Okay, here we are finishing up uh, one of the main back walls, and I just want to show you how I go about uh, framing up a window. Here's the window frame that's built independently, and I'll let you get a good look at the construction method there. It's just a 2x4 set atop of the main studs, not on the sides, and then this one's in the sides. Here's the header that will uh, support the structural load that's up above. 
These are two two by four set on their side and you'll notice I can put my middle finger in here as a space because two two by fours together are not as wide as one uh, as wide as the width. So uh, in order to keep everything flush on the outside and on the inside, I space them out about a quarter of an inch, half inch, and then uh, attach them to the header. And then this window frame, that's the rough opening dimensions of that window right there. And this bad boy just will slide up into place just like that and then drop in down here with a little gentle tap of my hammer and that will be the main uh, framing for the window. Now the next thing that'll happen once this is installed is another small stud will be placed on the inside where the bearing point of the sill is and then I'll explain why. I've got this big massive uh, building that I bought from Premier serve as a shop and if we observe the construction methods in here is that there is no double top plate which is interesting but um, it passes code. They have their studs every 16 on center with hurricane screws up at the top, but just something to note that there is no no double top plate up there, at least on the outside wall. It's just a single top plate. Same for the bottom, just a single bottom plate. And throughout the construction of this building, you can observe the same, same type of construction method that I did on my headers is up here. They have the double, the double two by four up there with the space because I like to sandwich them together, but they spaced it out. Um, they spaced it out there. Then they added a, a sill in here for extra measure because these things get transported. So, all right. Once the wall's framed. All right, there it is. So the first wall is up, framed, and now I can tack it down, tack it onto the side of the building, get it roughly in place, and then set the window, and then I can go over how I built it. All right, we got a window, we got a rough opening. I'm gonna go ahead and rough it in. Nice and snug needs to be attached. There we go. All right, if you did it right and you're following along, this is what your end wall should look like. It's a typical two by four stud wall with a window installed in it. Uh, can, pretty conventional framing, same way houses are built, sheds, etc. cetera. Um, I'll explain the anatomy of it here. So the first thing to observe is it's got a single bottom plate. And if this were on concrete, that bottom stud, it's called the bottom plate, that would have to be pressure treated, but we're not on concrete, we're on a wood frame floor. The plywood floor is pressure treated, so that plate doesn't have to be pressure treated, at least not for this application. So you got a single bottom plate, you got studs, which measures uh, 63 inches, uh, every 16 inches on center. I don't like to go any more than 16 on center with anything, that's controversial, but Trust me, stay at 16 on center and you'll have a sturdy building. I got a single uh, end post stud here. I may consider adding a, uh, another post in here. It's always good to double up your corners. So at the end, I'll probably go through and double up those corners, but single stud at the corners for now. Up here, this double stud is called a double top plate. This is just basically two two by fours sistered together. It acts as a stronger uh, load bearing beam for the roof load that's going to go on there and then that brings us to the window framing. So this is conventional window framing and let me explain a little bit about what's going on here. You have a double top plate, you have two two by fours sitting on their sides spaced about a half inch apart to keep them flush with the outsides of the two by four frame wall to accept, accept sheathing. And basically what this does is you have lateral loads coming down from the roof. 
the double two by four on its side help distribute the load that's coming in through all these weaker areas where the window is because there's no stud directly underneath it. It distributes the load out to the edges. That load is then carried down onto a top sill and then carried down through another two by four stud that goes all the way down to the bottom plate. And what that does is that acts as a, a bearing point for the roof load over the window. So in a typical uh, concrete construction house, you may have noticed that there's a big thing that says castcrete up above every window. That's called a lintel. It's a poured in place concrete uh, beam so to speak with rebar in it that's reinforced that will help distribute that load over that wall so this is the same thing in essence but just on a two by four uh, frame wall so if we had a conventional roof going up here with a lot of weight uh, that would distribute the load away from the window and then it will, it will always allow for a, a good operating window and so on and so forth so that that uh, header goes onto a sill creates a nice little picture frame around the window this is your uh, sill plate and then what happens is the, the weight of this stud here then can carry into, uh, if there's any weight on the sill, can carry down onto these bottom studs that act as a brace for the window down here so there's lateral load support. So uh, a lot kind of goes into framing out a window or a door that you should take into consideration instead of just running studs up and tacking the window in there. That's how you get windows that don't operate correctly after a couple months or windows that just break out of nowhere because there's always settling when it comes to these structures. There's a lot of weight that goes up into the roof, a lot of wind, etc. So you want to make sure um, all those loads are distributed correctly. So that's what the uh, framing should look like on your outside wall and then, or your inside wall. And here's the outside here. Everything remains nice and flush up in here, nice and flush for, you gotta think about the next substrate that's gonna go on this, which is wall sheathing. So you wanna make sure that all this is flush so your wall sheathing can go on nice and straight. Uh, everything's nice and, nice and flush down here on the ground area. So we're good to go and we'll trim off that little excess two by down there. All right, there it is. Framing is complete for the walls, windows, etc. are roughed in and loosely attached until I get to the point of final attachment. There it is there. So in essence this is a three wall, well technically a four wall section build. The long wall, which is this wall here, is built in two sections and sistered together. Uh, one section is eight feet, the other section is seven foot eight, and they are attached here, right here in between, and both mimic the same style construction, so the windows are equidistant from the exterior. They're attached at the corners, and everything looks pretty. So. The sun is setting, Jack's ready to go on a walk. Go enjoy the rest of this fine, last probably chilly day in Florida. Wiki, you wanna go? I think so, I think that's a yes. Okay, about to start on the roof here. So what I've done is I've attached a two by four ledger up here, and this is going to serve as a uh, two by four rest where the back side of the two by fours or are the uh, rafters are gonna sit on for the roof. And right now I'm starting on an end truss. This is gonna be a double on each end and I'm gonna do a double in the center. And what we're basically creating here is a mini glue lamb beam. So glue lamb meaning glue laminated. I'm using some wood glue here and then I'm gonna attach this with screws. And this is gonna create a double truss for the ends for extra support. Okay, hey, perfect time to show you how this is going. I've got two rafters attached. I've got the main double attached here using a Simpson uh, hurricane clip. And right now I'm just tacking everything in with four on each side. Then I'll go back through and attach the rest of the screws and all the holes there. And then here we've got, uh, and I'll put everything down below in the description, uh, but these are more USP. These are R15TZs. And these are R17 uh, ATZs. Uh, these are the hurricane clips and straps, uh, rafter connectors 
um, to get everything nice and solid and in place. And then they go over here onto this side. Same thing, attached over here, makes for a very solid connection. And then your roof sheathing will go on top of that. Uh, I'm gonna add another strap to this side. I got one on that side, etc. And then you're gonna basically go down the whole line. And what you're doing is you're taking your measurement um, from here. And what I'm basically doing is I'm putting a rafter over every single stud. So you're gonna take your measurements, you're gonna mark your studs here, here, and so on, all the way down. You're gonna transfer everything back onto your ledger side so everything's nice and straight. And then this way you know that you have a rafter over every single stud. All right, starting to take shape. Just laid some uh, roofing material up here just to see how it laid. It's laying nicely. Got nice spacing up here, exactly how we want it. And then down here, get an idea of the attachment, which is nice. Looking good, and then just wanted to note, down here I'm making another glue lamb beam. And give you a little tip is to get some of these clamps, because sometimes this wood isn't exactly straight, so keeping that clamped while I tacked it together. Got some glue in there. Hey bud. So, we're at about halfway here. Got to add another little sheet of, of uh, sheathing on the outside. And this is a 7 16 sheathing, sheathing, and I'll show you how you join these together so it stays nice and clean, clean here too in a second. It's looking good. Okay, here are the connectors I'm going to be using to attach the rafters or roof, little roof rafters. Uh, these are the USP uh, MI Tech. Uh, this is an R1 uh, 5TZ. And this is a RTZ ATZ and this is going to be used to attach the doubles to the stud wall and then this is going to be used to attach the basic um, rafters to the stud wall. Okay, roof sheathing is tacked on and cut to fit everywhere. So now I just got to go through and detach all of the sheathing using inch and a quarter screws all the way around. Some choose to nail it. I like to screw it down just in case it ever has to be taken apart. And we will give you a look on the top part. There. All nice and tucked underneath the existing roof. And I will show you how to shingle this very soon. But there's a good look at what the roof looks like. There's the profile view. Nice, healthy, one foot six inch overhang to protect hype chickens over there <laughs> in the chicken coop. And they're gonna be able to kind of walk around back here and sometimes when it rains real bad, I wanna give them a nice spot to get out of the rain. So I was able to just leave these as two by tens and then just run them out so they can uh, be protected from the crazy rains we get here in Florida. So. Let me show you the next stage here. I'm going to be putting the sheathing on with inch and a quarter screws, which is not very exciting, but necessary. And then we will get some tar paper and shingles up here and start building out the uh, soften and fascia and all that fun stuff. So it's starting to really take shape. There's a first look inside the building with the roof sheathing on and complete. And looks like one of my dogs left me a present on the floor. Very nice. Good times. So that's a good look. Okay, here we are up on the roof. Just got done tacking down all the sheathing. Ready to go. Okay, hey, today's roofing day. Running with these Timberline HD shingles in charcoal color to closely match the existing cook barn. And let's show you what's going on. Here's what the scene looks like out here today. Got the old trusty Makita Bluetooth radio. Here's my 
first couple bundles of shingles here and show you what the tar paper looks like. I didn't really show that step because it's just tar paper, but it's been up here for about a day or two. Right now I'm in the process of just trimming up an edge. So the way to do this is to start on the lowest side of the roof, lay your first row, next row, next row, next row, this way. And then obviously on the last run, put it up underneath the existing roof. So when you got water that's sheeting down, it does this and nothing can run up underneath the uh, tar paper. So that's the uh, basic kind of lay of the land. And when you start your shingles, you start back here as well. So each new layer is stacked atop of the next one. So it follows the slope of the roof as well. So let's get started. All right, here's the first about four courses here working on. Just wanted to go over what I'm doing. These are the Timberline shingles. Here's the back of them. They got some asphalt tar back here. You start with your out here on the first row here. That's a full course. You go all the way to the end. Then you cut a shingle in half. And you started with a half course back here. Or you can use the cutoff if it's long enough from the opposing end to start the new. What you're trying to avoid is doing a butt joint. Obviously your first course is gonna be a butt joint on the side, but what you're trying to avoid is stacking it again with a butt joint, which creates a compromised area, which should be at the corner. So staggering everything is the way to go. Be mindful of your tar paper, not pulling back when you lay your shingles on. And if you look real close, pull back, there is a nice little line that's red that's going to be the edge of your next row so when you lay on your shingle here take a look at that orange line you're going to set it exactly where you got to be right there on the line just like that and nail and I throw four nails in along each shingle and I try to get them on the the rafters as much as possible so that's it I'm going to keep going here Okay, let me take you out, show you what pretty much finished project looks like. It's, I've broken this video up into a bunch of different days. So, this is the finished product. I present to you the tractor barn, toy barn, whatever you want to call it. I just have to finish up some trim on that back window. I think I'm gonna call this one done. I took pictures 
as you can see here, putting them on the screen of this deck system. I didn't really do any videos on the process of it. Pretty uh, straightforward, the same way I did the flooring system in the tractor barn. I'm gonna add a couple of spring-loaded cane bolts to the doors. And a piece of aluminum in between the planks. But now it makes the perfect home for lawnmower, miter saws, outdoor power equipment. Awesome wheelbarrow, by the way. Never flat tire, I'll do a video on that. And I put a little workbench back here just to kind of put gas cans on or restring a trimmer or something pretty solid. Just got some stuff kind of hanging out here. So here's the doors. They're very simple. I took pictures. I'll put them in here, but real simple construction. Pre-painted everything before I put it together so you don't have to do all that, all that trimming. just latched together so yeah deck is all built out of 2 by 6 and uh, 2 by 10 uh, side ledger boards very solid I don't use any um, deck planks when I build decks I build them out of 2 by 6's as you can see there makes for a much more sturdy and rigid deck lasts a lot longer doesn't get all wonky. Same for the ramp. And this guy, right Dees? What are you doing? Good boy. So, yeah, just give me another good look at it. I think Diesel likes it.